welcome to a new episode of Live the African Dream podcast. My name is Eunice Ajim. I'm your host. And we are starting a new series, uh, which is going to be very focused on founders. Uh, one of our first founders is Victor Alede. Victor is a co-founder and CEO of Renes. Renes helps African talents get paid in minutes by clients and businesses globally, while saving costs on fees, by automating their invoicing and using foreign bank accounts with cards to localize their payments. Victor is an experienced technologist addict uh, with a knack of software engineering, product management, and people management. Renes is also one of Agile Capital Portfolio companies, and we are excited to showcase uh, really the story and what they are doing at Renes. Victor, it is so great to have you today. Thank you so much, Denise. It's good to be on the show. Yeah, definitely. So, Victor, I, I always love to start um, by just sharing a little bit about your story and your background. Um, what led you to, to starting Renes and, and really just give us the, the tea from the day you were born? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Victor. Um, born in Nigeria. I grew up in Nigeria and then uh, I started my journey into tech at early stage. I was here as when I was in secondary school. I've been into what club side designing and, and the rest. So 70% of my life has been as a remote worker, staying in Lagos while working with uh, companies in US, UK, and the rest. Uh, I've been involved with quite some companies in, in Africa and outside Africa. I was with Jumia for like two years. I um, was responsible for leading the Jumia Pay integration in Nigeria, Ghana, and Egypt. Mm -hmm. Then I joined Adela as well, where I was responsible for starting Salesforce administrative and developer screening. Before I joined Acumen Fund in the United States as an, as an engineering manager, where I led their team to build Acumen Academy. So while staying in Lagos, working for companies in the US, the challenges I faced during this period was what made me realize that there is need to build a solution that can solve this challenge. I can tell you that getting paid for my work was actually difficult than the work itself during this period because I would have to manually send invoices and wait for days for in international trans transfer to like happen. At that point, I was losing up to like 15% of my earning into this transfer fee and unfavorable exchange rate. In addition to this, I, have to, I had to combine several tools like that were not efficient for my contracting, invoicing, and payments. I remember some, some, some years ago, while I was setting up Acumen for an engineering team, and we were hiring from different African countries. I wanted to hire from a particular country. Right? But because the finance team were already tired with the fact that they have to pay people in multiple currencies, it was so stressful, there is no entity there. All this put together. So let's build Venice, a modern financial suit for African remote workforce and then remove all these headaches around contracting, invoicing, and payment, and ensure they get paid in minutes. And that's how I we started the journey. No, I love it. And I think um, I remember like my team, you had pitched to my team, and for some reason they were like, ah, no, not really. And then I was like, wait a minute, I think I saw a payroll, because it was a problem for me too. So I remember like, and if anybody has heard my story in the past, um, coming from a startup background and I was like, okay, like let's hire a team out of the African continent. And one of the biggest challenge that we faced was payroll, right? Like payroll and cross-border payment across multiple countries. Like it was a pain in the butt. Um, we had to drive to the bank, wire the money. It would take like a week, sometimes even two weeks for the, the employees to get the money. So I remember like when I came across Renes, um, I first was amazed by the product. Like when you walk me through the product, I was like, oh my gosh, like you fully understood all the different facets, right? Of like payroll, compliance, payment, like, and everything was automated. So it was only natural for me to say like, okay, I got to back Victor. I got to back the team. You guys are doing something amazing. First from a product and technical standpoint, and also from a customer standpoint, I think people, uh, when they decide to go out and fundraise, they, they rush to like raising money. You guys took your time. 
build an amazing product, build traction before even going out there and raising money. Before we go to the next phase, do you did you always know that you were going to become an entrepreneur or that was that just happened one day and you were like, oh, I need to start this? I think that, that has always been me. I remember why I was in primary school. I started a business. Um, I started a business because my parents always asked me to go and get them with charge cards. And mm-hmm. I have to work for like 30 minutes to like get charge cards for them. My dad, my mom, and my sister. So I, de- I decided to to start selling that with charge card. So anytime they asked me to get a charge card for them, I'll just go to my home, bring it out. And I was making little money. I it got to a point that I was selling Richard Card for everybody in my environment. So I think mm-hmm. it has always been inbuilt. Uh, but I was seeing myself more. Maybe I would just be solving problem technically, right? I wasn't sure. Maybe I'm going to set up a company, and then we'll we'll be solving this problem in a large scale. But as I go, things started changing. Exposure. You know, we can write code to like solve this problem. Then let's take it to the next level. Um, and it has been a series of products. When it seems to be like the third product, I've personally built with my co-founders, right? So we built a uh, map that was like five years ago, which happened to be a unified digital ad- advertising platform. We did a quick gas Uber like for for cooking gas d- delivery in Lagos. Before we now finally decided to build. So yeah, it's been a long of a uh, story behind it. We built several one that works, some fail before we next. Yeah, definitely. And and again, I did mention earlier that I was very impressed with how well built the product was. For any African or for anybody in the audience, how did you even get started? You know, being a coder because you're very active in the product development of all your products. Yeah. Um, the places I've been chance to work, I think I've been able to learn from people who have worked with. And I've always been between product and software engineering, so that mm-hmm. gave me insight about um, how the product should be built and how users should like relate to it. And then the last place I work, I come in from, I do beyond engineering because I was in, interfacing with the marketing team, sales team, cost team, and that gave me a lot of insight into marketing, some idea on sales and our products and partnership. I remember doing that period, I led a technical partnership with the EY, and that was a good source. So those knowledge helped me. And I was lucky to have good co-founder too. And so that are very knowledgeable in um, sales, um, marketing, and tech. So we're just pulling resources together, and that's how we've been doing. And we're doing a lot of research, learning, and taking, um, talking to people that are ahead of us in the game mm-hmm. awesome awesome yeah so let's speak a little bit more now about Renes. um Renes have done an amazing job you've been able to raise a pre-seed round um and now you guys are getting ready to raise a seed round um growing scaling fundraising product development managing customers acquiring customer Right? Like people get excited, like, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to launch a company, but there's so much work that goes into doing it. And it's easy to speak about the successes, but I think sometimes it's needed to speak a little bit about the ugly. Uh, I just want to learn from your personal experience as a founder and as a CEO, what hasn't been like uh, launching and growing Renaissance? The first thing I like to mention whenever people ask is if you're working as an employee of a company, you have your job description, like scope of work. But when you're a co-founder, you don't have any job description or scope of work. You just have to do things to like get the, the company moving, especially at the early stage. So what we tried to, what we did that work for us, we hire people that have interest of winning in mind at the early stage. We hire from within our network. It are people we've worked with, we've worked in the same company with. So they bring in their own expertise on board and their dedication. And then the synergy between the co-founder, because we've worked together before, uh, we've been friends for like six years. So we know the pattern through which we can increase our 
efficiency and that has been working. And then we try to we try to set deadline and target. So each tax has been divided. We kind of bring in what we call agile, which is very common in, in engineering. Mm -hmm. And that's what we use in our entire process. If if marketing is going to, to work on this, how long will it take them? And then what are the resources needed? Engineering, the same thing. And we just sold out to the work. That's the way I say we've been able to manage it. And um, just constant communication between us. That has been yeah. a key too, as well. No, I love it. I love how you're mentioning Agile. Just this morning, I was like, is Agile even a thing in venture capital? Because as a startup founder and a product manager myself, like I was so used to like, you know, setting goals and then like doing daily, you know, stand up and then like working towards like accomplishing things. And I feel like I kind of like fell away from that as a venture capitalist. And I was like, I like the founder in me, you know, like wants to get back um, to doing exactly that. I think you mentioned your co-founders and how you guys have known each other for the last six years. I think finding a co-founder as a startup founder first is a difficult task. It's not everybody's lucky enough to have and to find the right co-founders. They can either break or make your company. Um, how did you know that your co-founders were the right decision um, and you know getting on this journey with them and, and how is it going? <laughs> So when we inside they started, and, and I thought of people I can work with, the first two, two people that came to my mind was actually Richard and Sodudin. Because while working at Just Pay in, in the same team with Richard, well, let's talk about how we want to build a product that will be solving problems. Right? We've discussed several ideas. So when the idea of Venice came, I, okay, Richard, I think this, this is the right time. This is the product, mm -hmm. this is the idea. Let's build it and then just send like a, a Google Doc to, to the two of them. What do you guys think? Is this something you want to work on for the next 10 years? If it is go the wrong way, how are we going to manage it? But are you guys ready to like leave your full-time job and work on a product that um, no money is coming from me today? So I'm like, okay. I think um, we believe in your ability and the product, it's a problem which they've experienced to as well. So let's solve it. And that's how we started. Because we've been friends before, that has been helpful in navigating some, some, some challenges. We always look at it out. We've been friends before we went So that needs to like come first. When I, was, uh, I spoke to a friend of mine who has already started a company, and I asked him about co-founder. What was the number of co-founder I should get? Who are the people I should bring up? But I just said something. Look at your co-founder as your wife. It's a marriage, right? Either you divorce or you continue to patch it or that until you make it. So if you know you can deal with three wives, then go for three co-founders. If you know you can do with two wives, go for two co-founders. And I just key to that advice that your co-founder or your partner, at least for the next five to ten years in that business, Right. Can you cope with them for the next five years? Can you tolerate each other? And okay, Richard and Sodudin are the two people. I think I can do this. And I think it's been working well for us. Right. And whenever we're telling people our story, our met, uh, where we started, we have some old pictures of um, us together. You might not be able to like recognize me or recognize uh, Richard and, and Sodudin. Yeah, so it's been a great journey so far. Uh, we've been able to navigate a lot of obstacles, right? And um, here we are. No, I love that. I love the idea of like, if if uh, think about it as a marriage, right? Like if you can handle two, three, four wives, right? Then, um, you know, then, you know, <laughs> think about that when you're launching a company because you might actually spend more time with your co-founders than you spend time with your spouse. Like that's just the yeah. reality. I've been there. Um, so completely understand. So let's speak a little bit more about the product um, that Renes is offering. Um, I did give like a quick definition. We've spoken a little bit more about it. But if you were to give a better understanding for the audience out there, for either your customers um, or just anybody that is interested, or even an investor, you know, like what would you say Renes actually does and how big is the market? In two words. 
Venice helps um, global companies to be able to onboard and pay African talent compliantly in minutes. Venice also helps independent human workers to get paid from global clients and employers in minutes. We help these businesses. They don't have to set up an entity in Africa to be able to onboard and pay these talents. And then we undo their tax and other statutory payments. And then for the remote worker, we take care of the entire process from contracting to invoicing to them receiving payments and spending these payments. And as of today, the, the number of companies, Africans today are responsible for 10% of the global financing market. And this is expected to be number one by 2036. The rate of companies in African talent is growing more than 800% year on year. This is greater than that of all the continents together, right? So it's a market that's growing rapidly. We can look at it from African population perspective, the population of the youths and the rate at which they are adopting technology. Gone are the days when people just are software engineer from Africa. Now people are um, product manager, product designer, customer support, um, and then there is now um, virtual assistant which is actually growing rapidly and people are from Africa a lot. So uh, one of the core exports of Africa is talent, good talent. Because I've been there, I've, I've worked with a lot of people around the world and I've seen how African talents are performing. And everybody now wants to tap into that talent with what is actually going on in the world right now. Um, Companies are moving towards getting good talents from Africa where um, they can get that like uh, where they can pay less and get good talent. I love that. They can pay less and get really incredible talent. I am a testimony of that. And I am not just an investor of Renes. I'm also a client, um, which give me best, you know, uh, the best of both worlds. So from a product market fit standpoint, would you say Renes has hit product ma market fit or is it still on its way? We launched in March. We piloted with like six companies in March, right? We just use six companies to see how is our product doing, how are we under the tax calculation, NHF and the rest. Can we handle? And from that six companies now, we have up to like 40 companies globally, um, including Tsunga from Netherlands, Kidal in UK, and a, and a lot of other companies. And today we have up to like 80,000 remote workers on our platform and since we've launched none of the company we started with the churn rate has has been zero that shows that the product has been solving a good challenge for a good problem they are having right and then um i think we we are doing good numbers in terms of transaction volumes and that have been working perfectly so today when it is working as expected and we'll be launching to the public where any business can like sign up this month right yeah no i love that i love that you you gave a very good explanation without telling exactly <laughs> without having to tell anybody what you mean and um i read a post from um the founder of texters uh very recently that was really just praising Renes um and sharing how you guys have hit a tremendous milestone in a very short amount of time um, a tremendous milestone and have hit, I mean, you guys have been hitting your numbers, have been growing rapidly. I think like what I would love to just learn is for any, for you to advise any founders out there, right? As they go on and they launch your product, um, how have you been able to like successfully, I mean, I, I don't even know how to like, you know, two, three, four, five X, right? Growth. Um, in a very short amount of time? Like, what strategy did you use? You know, whatever you can share to help your fellow African founders that are also looking to, you know, acquire the right customers, you know, grow their, their team or even grow their revenue so that they can get to the next milestone of their companies. Because I think Renes is definitely hitting a lot of those milestones. For us, it started from the team. Maybe getting the right co-founder is, is the number one. Right. Yeah. Um, what I did was uh, I look at my ability. What are the things I lack? What are the people 
that I can bring on board and compliment me. And that's why I, I brought in people that, okay, um, my background has been more of tech and product. I need someone that is good in sales and marketing. Richard has done that at large scale with companies that like a lot of big companies. And then I bring in, so, so to then ask what. So getting the right co-founder was the first thing. And then um, we did a lot of research before we actually launched Redis. Redis original idea was in late 2020, but we didn't start, we started building in late 2021. We're just trying to look at, uh, is this the right product for this market? And then will this product solve the problem? Then we just launched like a little MVP, piloted with few companies with the feedback we make changes to our product and then now look at the problem from the other side of the market. Who are the people that are really facing this challenge and then they are ready to pay anything for it. That was mm -hmm. the second thing we did. And then we just started going after the market when we've confirmed that the product is effective and it's functioning right. And we just started going after the market. And we just, we know the people we want to like bring up, but who are the, who, who are these users? What are the ways we can get them in bulk, let me use that word in bulk, right? Instead of going after um, user A, user B, are there a way we can get them in bulk? Then we apply that strategy. So we know that uh, with just a little effort, we can get like 20 users, 40 users, 50 users. And then uh, we just put in some strategy we've used before at our former place of work that worked for us, right? So this has been proven and it's still the same market, then let's apply it. We did that. And then we try to be closer to our user. Today we have some of our users that from user, they become partner, right? We also do introduction to them. They get new customers. And then for the, for the remote worker, we actually hire some of them as a contractor with us to go, oh, you are a designer and you are getting paid through awareness. We have this new design, can you help us with it? So what, what we are trying to, we just try to like create a community around our products. And that's actually our goal. Like where everybody feel like this is my product, this, this is my company. I think that's what uh, helped us a lot. And we've not spent it out. Majority of our goal today has been organic. Wow. No, yeah, I love less, that. Yeah, less money on it. So just, Knowing your market and knowing how you can capture them with less um, spending at the early stage, I think that's mm -hmm. been the key. And then getting the right team. No, I love that. And I'm going to mention like two points that you mentioned uh, that, you know, I'm going to repeat just so that it can sink in. I think the first thing that you mentioned is how really having first a good understanding of the problem that you're trying to solve. Because I think a lot of the times I see founders, like they have a solution and they're looking for the problem, right? So like first having a good understanding of like, what is the problem? But then second, right, really understanding who exactly is my customer, right? What kind of pain do they have? And make sure that you really target that customer because guess what? If you can fix your problem, they will pay you, right, to fix it. Like, it's a no bueno. And I think that's why I was so excited when I saw it because I was one of those clients, right? Like, hiring across the continent, like, trying to figure out, like, is it Western Union that I have to pay? Do I have to wire the money, right? And then, like, I just get on Renes, I click a button, I put money into my card, um, and then, like, I just, you know, pay my employees. Like, it, it, you just make my life so much, it would, like, a very minimal fee that I can't even pronounce yet because it's so good that I don't think you can find those kinds of fees anywhere else. Maybe I have a discount as an investor. I don't know, but like, I'm just like, this is very affordable. Um, the next thing that I think you mentioned is the community aspect. And I'm actually take you up on the wall because I do have a lot of needs. <laughs> um, and I think one of the things too, and we can go really quickly on this, is like I'm hearing a lot of talks about the shortage of talent across the African continent. Um, a lot of founders have been capable of raising a lot of money. Sometimes, at least from what they're saying, they have a very hard time finding talent in Africa. Has that been your experience or you think maybe they're not searching in the right places? 
Well, we've not struggled to hire any of our team members. What we do is uh, we try to let them see how the idea is, how big it is, right? Mm-hmm. And I've worked with the company for like one and a half year. I would say without getting paid. Because yep. the, the founder, they let me see the big pictures of where the company is heading to, right? And then I, I decided to work with them. And then they were helping me grow in my own career too. So what we do is anybody that's coming on board, first call, just let them know what trainers is doing and where we want to be in the next five years and how they're coming on board where we achieve that dream. And I always ask everybody question, uh, what are you looking for in any company you want to work with? And then um, what are your plan for the next two to three years so that we know mm-hmm. how we can support you? So let them know that you are coming on board like airports to but we too, we also want you to, to we also want to help you achieve your dream. And then yeah. we look within our network. Who are the people we've worked with? Who are the people that our friends can like can like recommend? And we are building a company where we are like family. One of the things we are doing when it's at least the people is we when it comes to hierarchy, we don't put on hierarchy. Everybody's just like a team, we can discuss and people can freely express themselves. For me, that's what I've experienced in like two companies that I've been with. I see the freedom within a team. I've been in a company that it took me almost two months to know who the director was because it was no weapon. Now it's like everybody was just relating like, okay, we can build this in, in awareness. And to, to the best of our ability, we ensure that the compensation is fair now compared to what other people are giving in the market. But searching within your network has been the key in getting the right talent. Today at Venice, I've worked with like 30% to like 40% of our staff before. Why Richard has worked with like 30 to 40% of them before. So it's now more of a people that have worked together before, family coming together. So they are just seeing Venice as, as their own. And that has been no. helpful. I love that. I love that. So I have two quick questions. I want you to answer like in 30 seconds or like a minute or less. Uh, the first one is, what is one mistake you have done on your journey as a founder? And if you were to like start Renes all over again, what would you do differently? So I think um, not executing the idea earlier, because if we executed this idea as a 2020, when we have the idea, maybe today, I think we should be at um, like at a very good area uh, like this. So I think okay. that's 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 number one. S- secondly, would be not not pushing the product the way we meant to push it at early stage. At the early stage of Venice, we were just like, uh, okay, we have this product. We are not going after a lot of people that we should have gone after. It was later when I realized that, okay, it's time to now push this product. That's where we now started mm-hmm. talking about awareness, reaching out to people. I think it's in the last two months that people started thinking about awareness, but we've been existing solving problem. But we, we don't kind of talk about our products, talk about the problem we are solving to the public. I think those two, yeah, they are the major mistake I can point out for now. Yeah, I love that. I think, you know, especially when you're a product person, you're like, you want your product to be perfect before you send it out to customers. You know, I think I'm all about like, do it, you know, like do it while it's burning, get customers feedback. And then like, as the fire is burning, you're like reducing it gently. So I I love that mistake. One last question before we end this call, we try to keep it under 30 minutes. Um, as a founder running an African or serving the African market, um, this whole podcast is about living your African dream. Um, what is Victor's version of the African dream? So my vision can, you can see it in Venice, right? We don't mm-hmm. want border or region to be a barrier for any talented Africa from having access to global op- opportunity. Because that's something I've enjoyed. While in Africa, I had access to some global opportunities that helped my life and my career. And that's the same thing. I want everyone, every talented person in Africa, 
you might be staying in Lagos, you might be staying in Kenya, but have access to global opportunities. I love that. I love that. Well, Victor, thank you so much for joining us today on the Leave the African Dream podcast. Um, you can find Victor and Renes on all social media platforms. If you're a freelancer and you're a business and you transact globally, Renes is the place to be. Thank you so much. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day.